Amen. Some of us, we've not seen each other in church in two or three weeks. So I'm glad that we got to be here with you together at the same time. Amen. I hope everybody had a good time and everybody's feeling better that's been sick. And uh, amen. Glad to see Brother Jones, Sister Jones. Amen. You know, world traveling. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see that uh, Braden's feeling better. And Brother BJ's feeling better. I'm glad I didn't get what they had. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good, isn't He? He is good. He is good. You know, I've got a. I worked on two or three lessons today, but a couple of them I worked on, I just didn't feel like I was quite ready to teach them. And so tonight I'm going to teach you something that I felt like it just kind of come together in my heart. Amen. I was inspired by some things I had heard and seen and read, and I'm going to share that with you tonight. If somebody would like to come and get my notes and pass them out for me, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Jones. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you saw something. I, I, I saw someone wrote it. And the comment was that there had been like 3,000 people had drowned uh, uh, coming towards Greece. Uh, 19,000 children have been aborted in the past week. And uh, a couple of other world significant tragedies. And the world is talking about a dead gorilla. <laughs> And to me, that just encapsulated something in my mind that what, what is in the news and on the news is not really news. My wife and I have been talking. I get these notifications on my phone. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, who decided that this was newsworthy, that it would send me a notification on my phone? It's, how's that news? You know, some Hollywood star is in rehab here and, and, uh, you know, some politician said something stupid. And, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to read that. Why are you telling me about this? Is anybody else getting that on your phone? These just weird uh, news alerts. And, and it, just, it just is solidified in my mind. We need to be thinking about the good news and not get wrapped up in all of this fake news that is out there. We just need to put our hearts. The Bible says whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And I pray the Lord would help us all to obey that scripture. This, this evening I'm going to begin reading. You don't have to stand. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. A very favorite scripture. We have heard it quoted many times. But I would like us to uh, look at this scripture tonight. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Period. And many people stop reading at verse 19, at verse 18. Verse 19, it says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. It's very important for us to understand the value of of a willing will. Exodus 35 and 4, as the Lord began to give directions in the construction and the various things that would be done, I, Exodus 35 and 4, and Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord. Everybody say willing. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. 
But if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. And tonight I just would like to, for us to consider tonight the difference between a want and a willing. The difference between wanting to drive a new car and being willing to pay for it. The difference between wanting to play a guitar and willing to practice. The difference between wanting a doctor degree, but also you must be willing to enroll and go to class and finish. People who want to have a good paying job, but unwilling to do what it takes to have a good paying job. Everybody say want is not the same as willing. Amen. The difference between wanting and willing, some people say they want to please God, but they are unwilling to live a life that pleases God. In 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 10, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, Naaman, who we're talking about. Naaman was uh, the captain of the armies of Syria, Assyria. And uh, he was a leper. And in his household, there was a, a, a young woman that had been taken captive and she was serving in the house of Naaman. And obviously she had an affection and a care for this man that was her master. And she said, oh, that you were in Israel so that one of the prophets could pray for you and you could be healed. And so Naaman, uh, uh, at that word of testimony, he gathered up his, his camels and his, his donkeys and he made the journey from his house to the land of Israel where the prophet lived. And so when he got there, he sent his servant and then Elisha sent a messenger, verse 10, unto him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought, I thought, he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and far, far the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. He was mad. He wanted to be healed, but he was unwilling to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean. Then when he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like into the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He had enough want to, to travel all that distance. But he was not willing at first to obey what he was told. Because God did not work like he thought he would. He got mad. However, thank God for His servant that reasoned with him and said, why not do what He told you to do? You know, I thought to myself, you know, God, give us all the spirit of the servants of Naaman that were willing to reason with him and convince him to be willing to obey what the word of the Lord was to him. Amen. Let me have a heart of a servant to help someone that has some want to, but not enough want to to do the will of God. Amen. The root of all evil in this world comes from the corruption of the human will. Amen. We, we could tonight talk about the fact that God created uh, Adam and Eve and He gave them the ability to choose whether they would be obedient or whether they would be disobedient whether they would believe and obey or whether they would doubt and disobey. And we know what happened, but we see within the story there in Genesis 3 uh, encapsulated a, a, an eternal truth that is true for us, that we 
have a will that is powerful enough to break the perfection of God. Amen. I, I have a will. You have a will. But not only do, do we have the will to break the perfection of God, we have a will to bring the perfection of with the will of God to come to pass in our world. Nuclear physics. Amen. We have a have Brother Ryan, he works at the nuclear power plant. And, and I could ask him the question, and he'd probably give you a more detailed answer, but I, I'm going to be the nuclear physicist right now. Where does nuclear power come from? It comes when an atom is broken. And in that, 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 that chemical reaction... When an atom is broken, it creates an incredible amount of energy and heat. And what they will do is they take that atomic reaction when that atom is broken and they will pour steam, they pour water uh, into that, that area, uh, something that is heated, and there, there will be steam that's created and those turbines will turn and create electricity because a single atom was broken. Amen. We have lights on tonight. And, and, and if we apply that same idea, not, not nuclear physics, but let's say the, the physics of salvation, the physics uh, of the Spirit, uh, when we have been given the opportunity to repent, we break our will, submit our will, surrender our will. And when we say, yes, Lord, and we transition from what we want into what we will do, we put ourselves in a position to experience the power of God in our life. The truth is powerful, but the truth alone has no ability to do any of us any good. The truth is the truth. Whether you believe it or not, it's still true. Whether you obey it or not, it's still true. But truth only has power when I will submit to the will of God and obey that truth. Amen. The breaking, the bending, the surrendering of my will uh, opens my life, opens my world to experience the power of God. Praise. You know, I saw someone where, where some people, uh, uh, they praise, praise. They just like an experience of praise and they're just, they're just, they're just praising praise. And I've been in situations and places where there was a lot of movement and there was a lot of noise, but I didn't feel nothing. <laughs> Anybody been there before? Amen. But, but the bottom line is when I will, will, will bring my will into a position of willingness to God, amen, I can say praise the Lord and the presence of God can move up all, all around me, inside of me, and I can feel the presence of God because I am engaging my will to obey the Word of God. Somebody say amen. Worship, prayer. Giving, living. You know, it, it, the, the point is it's about willing. You know, sometimes uh, in one scripture, Paul says, you know, if, if I do this willingly, amen, I, I'm going to be blessed. But if I do it against my will, if I do it in resistance, it is of no benefit to me. And I think it's so important. It's important for us to do the right things for the right reasons, to be in a position where we're not just doing the will of God, but there is a willingness inside of us that says, God, I want to please you. I want to do your will. Go through the scripture and find when it says uh, 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 where the Lord gives us directions. When you obey that, in that obedience is where you experience the spiritual dynamic that is the kingdom of God. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. There's a lot of people that, that love the Lord on some level, but they ain't casting out devils. Amen. The Bible says these signs shall follow. What does that mean? You've got to resist the devil. 
you got to be willing to put yourself in a place where there's some conflict, amen, where there's a battle going on. It's easy for us to, you know, talk about the power of the devil, amen, while we're just having church and playing, not playing church, but you know what I'm saying. Amen, if you want, if you, sometimes you got to be willing to put yourself in a place where there could be some spiritual warfare. Amen, our will, the difference in the righteous and the wicked is not faith. It's not simply belief. The difference in the righteous and the wicked is the fact there is a willingness to do what God has called us to do. My will affects my worship. My will affects my giving. My will affects my church attendance. And I'm preaching to the choir tonight. Amen. You're here tonight because you, you will to be here. Amen. You, can, you have to recognize that where we experience the benefits and the blessings of God is when we engage our will to a place of surrender to say, God, I want what you have for my life no matter what it may bring. It may bring brokenness. Amen. It may bring trouble. It may bring challenge. But I would rather... I would rather live in the land of trouble and the will of God than to live in the land of peace outside of the will of God. Because there is no peace outside of the will of God. I mean, you could look at what Jonah did. The Lord sent him to a godless city. And he chose rather to go on a cruise. (laughs) But can I tell you, he would have been better off to go to that wicked city and obey God rather than go in a cruise and hit a storm and find himself at the bottom of the sea. Amen? And so it's so important for us to recognize that God has given us something very significant that separates us from the rest of His creation. He gave us the ability to engage and activate His power in this world. Truth without obedience, without willing as obedience, has no power. God, give me a willing mind and a willing heart. Can you say that with me? God, give me a willing mind and a willing heart. When I use my human will, it, it releases the divine power of God into my world. Amen. It's not truth the world needs. It's not the power of God people need. It's not the plan of God that people need. They need a willing heart. Uh, We preached about it a little bit Sunday. Cornelius had a willingness inside of him that was willing to obey God. You know, we have people that are hungry for more. But if Peter would have showed up and preached to them, they would have said, I've already been baptized. I saw an angel. I pray all the time. They would have a list of the reasons why they don't need to obey Peter. But there was something about Cornelius. He was willing to obey what he was told to do. And you look in your Bible, the people that were saved and experienced the power of God, when they were given a word from God, they said, Yes, Lord. Maybe they needed someone to cajole them and encourage them like Naaman, but he finally said, Yes, Lord, and he got brand new skin. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I, 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 it's, it's just an amazing thing to consider. You know, I, 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 I was, I was, the, the fact that, that people have a want to, they have a desire. We live in the Bible Belt. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of religious people and they all have a measure. Many of them have a de- sincere desire for God. But they do not have a sincere willingness to obey God. Uh, my, my wife asked me uh, today, had I seen a video that uh, an evangelist, Gordon Poe, posted. And there's a church up in New York City, and uh, I believe it's a Hillsong church or something, and they do a lot of music. And uh, they're preachers, you know, they're, you know, easy believism. Uh, you know, you, you look at the videos, it don't look like church to me. And they had a women's conference here a couple of months ago, and they had the the naked cowboy that was playing and singing on their platform. How's that church? That ain't church. But you know what? They draw a crowd. 
because they are appealing to people's... <clears throat> they're meeting people where people are willing to go. <laughs> and they're not giving them what the people need to hear to be saved. Oh, I believe there's some power there. It's just not the power of God. And I think it's very important for us to recognize that, that you know what, we, we could have a million dollars given to us tomorrow. And we could use it for television and radio and advertising. Uh, we, we, we could ha have a, a 365-day revival. We, we could pray until there were, uh, we had bloody knees. We could fast till we had to go buy all new clothes. And none of that is going to make anybody live for God. It's not. The only thing that's going to make somebody live for God is their will. Their will. Why are you living for God? Is it because your mama made you? Is it, is it because the pastor made you? You're living for God because you didn't want to disappoint your mama? At the end of the day, the reason why we live for God is something at some point in our life said, Man, I don't want to live in this world. I don't want to be lost. I want to be blessed. I don't know what the motivation was. You know, some people start serving God because they don't want to go to hell. Amen. That's a good reason. I don't want to go to hell either. Some people serve God because they want to go to heaven. I don't know what it is that may motivate us at different times in our life, but at the end of the day, we're going to be faced with the brass tacks of what we are willing to. To do. You know, there's a scripture in Matthew chapter 8. It's a story when Jesus uh, uh, came to the Gadarenes and there was a demon possessed man that met him, came out of the tombs and met him. This man had uh, potentially thousands of demons. Thousands of demons. And those thousands of demons could not stop that man from coming and worshiping Jesus. And they began to talk out of the man. And you come to uh, 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 torment us before our time. And Jesus said, you know, be gone. And when the Lord cast the devils out of that man, there was a herd of swine feeding. And, and I, you know, I've heard people say, I don't know, but it could be that, that the spirit of those demons was revealed because when it went into those swine, they all committed suicide. But 12,000 demons couldn't make a man totally take his life and couldn't keep him from worshiping the Lord. And I think it's important for us to understand that at the end of the day, what God has given you, He has given you something that is stronger than any devil in hell. If you decide you want to live for God, the devil, hell, this world, nothing can stop you from doing what it is that you want to do. At the end of the day, if you don't want to live for God, God ain't going to stop you. God ain't going to stop nobody from going to hell. He died for us. What else can He do? Amen. Lord Jesus, give me a willing mind and a willing heart. You know, I thought tonight as I was thinking about this, Ezekiel chapter 1, uh, the prophet has a vision uh, of, of the wheel in the middle of the wheel. You know, and it's a fantastic thing, hard to imagine. But I, I, I think of the fact that that is a picture of what I want. I want my will to be in the middle of His will. Amen. That the spirit of the living creatures would get inside my will that's inside His will. And amen, that, that when, when God moves on you and God moves on me and we move together, that when people would see it like Ezekiel say, they say, ain't that something? I ain't never seen. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen the Lord settle down on someone. You've seen the Spirit of the Lord get in someone's life, and you've seen it take them through hell and high water, seen it get them through tragedies and troubles, and you wonder, how do they keep going? At the end of the day, God anoints their will and gives them the grace to endure and to, 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 to make it through to the other end. We can't make this by ourselves. But when we open our, our will, we submit our will and willingly pursue the work of God, God puts His supernatural power in us that we can see the kingdom of God realized in our world. Somebody said, Amen.
Amen. Our greatest challenge is not the devil. Our greatest challenge is not the world. Our greatest challenge is to bring our heart into a position of complete willingness. Do I have to? Do I have to? Amen. Sometimes when you're dealing with your children, that's their response. We're going to church. Do I have to? Going to school, do I have to? Yeah, you have to. But at the end of the day, uh, sometimes we do things out of obligation. And sometimes we just got to take our will, our heart, our person, that, you know, that, that struggle. We got to take that, that most carnal side of us and go pray Him through. You know, I've said it before, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, fiction, there's a, there's a character called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll is a, is a sophisticated, educated doctor, well-respected in the community. But when, when it gets dark, the evil of him comes out, Mr. Hyde. And at the end of the day, if we'll all be honest, there are dark nights and dark times of the soul. <clears throat> Amen. We're not quite as saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost as we are on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Praise the Lord, Sister. Amen. Dr. Jekyll dresses up good for church, but our Mr. Hyde sometimes is less than, than he should be. And I believe it is the will of God that when we are brought into a place of conversion that Mr. Hyde has the Holy Ghost. Amen. Even when we're having a bad day and a dark night, Mr. Hyde still has the Holy Ghost. And sometimes we got to take our we got to take our hide to the altar. God wants to save your hide. Amen. He wants to save our hide. And at the end of the day, our hide is our will. We got to take our will and pray that the Lord would sanctify our, our critical spirit, sanctify our negativity, sanctify our resistance, and get Him prayed through again. Amen. I'm preaching to you now. Amen. God, give me a willing mind and a willing heart. God, give me a fresh burden, a fresh desire that it's not just about what I have to do. What's the bare minimum that I would be driven with the passion that what is the will of God? What does God want to do? I know this is going to make me sleep less, eat less, have more less free time, but what is it that God is calling for me? Mr. Hyde, pray through. Tell yourself that, Mr. Hyde. Pray through. Amen. We've got to have a willing heart, a willing mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor and, and that ye through His poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice. For this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to to that he hath not. Sometimes people say, you know, if I had a million dollars, I'd pay tithes on it. I feel so bad that I don't have more to give. What I would say to you, don't worry about what you don't have. Perform what you do have. Give what you do have. Be faithful in the percentage of what you wish you could do. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about, you know, well, if I had, you know, I wish, I wish I didn't have a, have a job so, so I could just work for the Lord all the time. Okay. How about give the Lord an extra hour? <laughs> you can't work 40 hours, you have to work. But, you know, how about make some space and time? And maybe if you make some space and time, maybe the Lord will bless that and honor and give you a little more space and time. Because, you know, it's easy to say, this is what I'd do if I had this. But prove it. By doing what you can with what you have now. Amen. That's some good preaching right there. Amen. You know, there's a story in the Bible. Jesus uh, is about to go into Jerusalem and He sends His disciples and He tells them, go and find a colt 
that has never been written. Now, I'm not a country boy, but I know enough to know that if you get on a donkey or a mule or a horse that's never been ridden, they are not normally going to be acceptable to that. So the question would be, how could Jesus ride a donkey that had never been ridden uh, into the city of Jerusalem? How? Because the donkey was willing. The donkey was willing. At the end of the day, Jesus is looking for someone like you, even if you might be a donkey sometime, to carry His glory into the city. Amen. Come on now. About to start preaching up in here. Amen. Am I willing? Am I willing? Ask you, I don't want you to say it out loud, but just think about it. Will you be honest with yourself that there are some areas of unwillingness in you that need to be purged? You imagine Jesus, the Lord, uh, told Moses, tell the people, the death angel's coming. The death angel's coming. And every firstborn in every house and every family is going to die. And he tells them, take a lamb, put it aside, take care of it, bring it in, kill it, eat it, eat the whole thing, keep your clothes on, your shoes on, staff in the hand, and get the blood and put it on the doorpost and the lintel. But you know what? Each one of those families, someone had to do what the Lord told them to do. I have no doubt that if there was anyone that didn't put blood on the doorpost and the lintel, they would have suffered the same fate as the Egyptians. It's not enough to have relationship. It's not enough to have covenant. Each one of us at the end of the day got to do what everybody else has got to do to go to heaven, to be saved, to have our, 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 the blessing of the Lord on our families. Amen. I believe that I, you're here tonight. I'm preaching to the choir tonight. Amen. Amen. I, I'll, I'll come up with another message for the donkey Sunday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somebody say, bless him, Jesus. Hmm. In Judges chapter 5 and verse 1, then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinanom, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Everybody say willingly. Willingly. And they began to sing. They sing this song. In the midst of their singing, there is a divine interruption. An angel from the Lord interrupts their singing and he says, Curse ye miras." said the angel of the Lord, Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. They wanted to be free, they wanted to be blessed, but they couldn't stir themselves up to go fight when it was time to fight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The will must overcome the want. Amen. We must not just want to be saved on my own terms. That's what we're dealing with today. We, if, you, if you teach any Bible studies and they don't get saved, don't get the Holy Ghost, and, and probably to some degree people that get saved get the Holy Ghost and they walk away, they're like the rich young ruler. They said, how do I inter, inter, inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus said, you know, obey the law. And he said, what are they? And he begins to list them out. And uh, Jesus uh, asked him, and the, the rich young ruler said, I've done these since I was a young man. And the Lord said, okay, go sell all you have and give it to the poor. And he walked away sorrowful because he was very rich. He had the want to. But when it came down to it, he wasn't willing to to do what it took to get what he wanted. Amen. I, I pray that we would ask the Lord to help us to have a brand new experience of repentance. Repentance is rectifying the will. Repentance means to turn, 
to change direction. It's, it is a submission, a surrender to the will of God. You know what took the prodigal away from the father's house? His will. You know what took the prodigal back to the father's house? His will. I will. I will. And at the end of the day, you and I are going to do what we determine in our will to do. The miracles of Jesus, they were done when they heard about Jesus, they believed about Jesus, but ultimately when they obeyed the words of Jesus, that's where the miracle happened. You know, there's a story uh, where Jesus healed a blind man and he's a blind man. And the Lord talks to him and here in a minute he hears, feels this wet stuff being pushed into his eye sockets. And the Lord said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. You ever asked yourself, how did he find the pool? He's blind. He's got mud on his face. A big disgrace. Walking around with mud all over his face. How did he find the pool? I believe he found someone that knew where the pool was and they took him to the pool. And you know what? That's what we are called to do as the church of the living God. We can see what other people can't see. And we have to trust that the Lord would come into their lives, whether through our testimony, our witness, through our, or just maybe trouble. It may be their own problems. It may be their own interactions and their personal walk with God. And the Lord may begin to deal with them. And we have to understand it's our job to take the blind to the pool so that they can wash. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10. Hallelujah. God, give me a willing mind and heart. God, I pray that you, oh God, would wash me and cleanse me and renew me. Lord, give me a new mind. Restore in me, Lord God, a fresh desire. Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. Do all things... Can we read this together? Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Amen. God, give us a willing mind and heart. Can we pray? Father, we love you today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that You, O oh God, would give me a fresh willingness, a fresh touch of desire. Lord Jesus, I pray that You, O oh God, would help us, Lord Jesus, to know, Lord, what it is that You desire from us. Lord, not just from Your Word, but that we could be led by the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, that we could obey the call and the draw and the work of the Holy Ghost.